MLB Network is your exclusive home for postseason baseball. It's game one of the National League Division Series between the New York Mets and the Cincinnati Reds. Luis Castillo will do the pitching in front of the hometown crowd here in game one. Dan, any thoughts? Hey, this guy has a four-pitch repertoire, right? And those are a lot of nice options to have. You can go hard soft. You can go in and out. And any time you have four pitches, if you can throw them for strikes, you have the big advantage. Heading out towards shallow right. Aquino has to come in a few steps, but he has it for route number one. Got it, got it. Now in the box, Robinson Cano, as he'll get his first opportunity in this one. Committed to that one a bit too soon as it locks him up for strike one. Looking at his lifetime numbers, Cano is up over 2,700 base hits to this point in his major league career. One and one the count. And now pitch on the way. Keeping it down here as it's to one and two. Clear skies in the forecast this afternoon. 62 degrees here at first pitch. Fastball. Strike three called as he couldn't pull the trigger. And there are two away. So bases are empty here with two gone. And that'll bring in Jeff McNeil. Hops this one up. But this will land untouched. The wind up and the 0-1. And he pulls the string on the circle change, but it's taken for ball one. Time for a look at our umpires in this one. Behind the plate is James Kingsley. Hey, Dero, James Kingsley's a pretty good umpire. He doesn't get too excited, keeps things under emotions. He's a pretty good ball and strike umpire. Yeah, James Kingsley will never show you up, and he's always approachable. The first baseman. He looked a little bit out in front right there, but he's able to pull that ground ball through the hole for a single. No balls and a strike to count. McNeil, the runner at first with two gone. A ball and a strike to the Mets' first baseman. That was a tempting pitch to swing at right there. A big power guy like this really wants something that he can elevate and drive out of the ballpark. One and two now. From the belt, the pitch. Still one and two. As a look, now the pitch. Swung on and missed, and that's the final out of the inning. Mets leave one. Now it'll be the Reds' turn. Jacob DeGrom gets the call in hostile territory here for game one of the division series. What do you have for us on him, Danny? This will be interesting. This guy won the NL Cy Young Award last year. He's a solid pitcher, Matt. One of the things he does, he throws the ball into the strike zone, and he's not afraid of contact. Solid pitcher. Nick Senzel stands in as he checks his swing here for strike one. One and one to the Reds' leadoff man. DeGrom has racked up over 1,300 innings on the Major League mound, and over those innings, he's collected over 1,500 strikeouts. Here he comes on a ball and two strikes. To third. Reined in. And that's out number one. So the bases are empty with one man gone. And standing in is the on-base machine first baseman Joey Votto. Hit on the ground down the first baseline. But a foul ball here, 0-1. Now here's the pitch. Pretty good pitch right there. Fastball in off the plate. One of the things you want to do as a pitcher, try to stand those hitters up. Way outside. Nearly to the backstop. Two and one. One out, nobody on. And that misses off the plate and low, so it's three and one now. Good job to work the count and put himself back in the driver's seat. Started off with one strike, and now he's got the count in his favor, three and one. And he missed with that one. It's ball four. A one-out walk here in the home first. That is third. No left fielder. So one got in the inning here with a runner at first. And next to bat will be Jesse Winker. He's set, and the pitch. Swing and a miss as he was way in front of that one. 
Hey, what a great pitch right there in a big situation to pull a string on that changeup. He knew that hitter was going to be super aggressive. Fouled away. Here it comes, 0-2. Oh, sorry, that's a ball. Step out of the box, take a deep breath. After spitting on that changeup, you might have bought yourself a fastball. Good swing on a tough pitch, and he'll stick around to see another one. Runner at first here, one man out. Again, another foul ball. Line toward center field. Cespedes is back, and he'll get there to make the play for route number two. And with two away now, let's give you a look at the big picture here. There you see the participants in this year's playoffs. Stepping in, Eugenio Suarez. In previous duels with DeGrom, he comes in hitting right at a 300 clip. He also has one home run. And this one's in the dirt. And a nice job keeping it close. The 1-0. Suarez brings a ton of pop to the plate with him, particularly against right-handed pitching. Some guys don't drive the ball as well when facing a pitcher who throws from the same side that they swing the bat, but that's certainly not the case here. Yeah, this guy just absolutely hammers right-handed pitching. You know, some guys like the ball in, coming towards them, and that's exactly what the righty-on-righty -righty matchup presents itself. A two-seamer in, a four-seamer that leaks out over the plate, a hanging breaking ball. This guy seems to absolutely hammer those. And he takes ball three, so it's a full count now. Good spot for an RBI. Put the ball in play with the runner in motion. He could score all the way from first. Now a fastball as he just reared up and let that one fly, and the inning is over. One left for Cincinnati. We are still All set for the start of the inning and standing in the outfielder Michael Conforto a swing and a ground ball to third and that'll get by into left field so he's on to lead off the inning boy so frustrating as a pitcher you make a quality pitch on the inside half of the plate right there try to bust him in D row and he fights it off the other way yeah you tip your hat to the pitcher right there he executed his pitch but nice job by the offensive player fighting it doesn't matter what it looks like the knocks a knock fastball got him to swing through it it's one and one when the pitcher on the mounds establishing this kind of heater you got to taken high and deep to right and a dive, but it rattles in and out of the glove. But that'll be off the right field wall. And that runner will go no further than second as there are two aboard now. Hey, two runners on after back-to-back -back singles right there. They are in prime position to put the first run on the board right here. Here's the catcher, Wilson Ramos, as the changeup to him drops in there for the first strike. That misses. One ball and one strike here to the Mets backstop. Sent in the air out to straightaway center. Senzel's got it, and there's one gone. Coming to the plate now, Joannis Cespedes. And he could give his guys an early lead if he can come through here. Swing and a screamer, but this one's not going to stay fair. Now the slider gets the call in the bottom part of the zone. What a nasty pitch right there. Batter thought it was going to hit him, and it ends up breaking into the zone for a strike. And the slider gets him swinging. Two gone. Two men on. Two out. And that'll bring up the converted shortstop from his days at Stetson University, Jacob DeGrom. Ready with the 1 0. On the first, and the Mets are going to come up empty here as that ends the inning. Two left for the Mets. We'll go to the bottom of the second. No score. 
stepping up to the plate, Mike Moustakis. He's set to lead off the home half of the second. A ball of no strikes. DeGrom, a six foot four inch right hander. He was a ninth round pick back in the 2010 first year player draft. What an absolute steal. I mean, he's, this guy has gotten a lot of people some big raises in the organization. To be drafted as low as he was and turned himself into one of the biggest superstars in our sport. I am very impressed with what this guy's been able to accomplish. And that finds some outfield grass. It's a base hit. So the leadoff man is aboard to start out the inning. Batting pitch. The right fielder. Number 44. Stepping into the box, Aristides Aquino. Here's the first pitch to him. Nope. And that misses for ball one. Nobody out, runner on first. Popped high in the air. McNeil calls for it. One away. Ready now for Cincinnati. Bo Bichette. He's ready. Here's the first offering. And he misses inside with that one. Ball one. Runners on first with one down. Can't get around quick enough, and that'll move the count to one and one. From the belt, the pitch. On, he pops it up. In there, a base hit. And that runner will go no further than second as there are two aboard now. Well, that's what's so disappointing as a pitcher, d -Row. You make a really good pitch, and yet this guy's so big and so strong, he's able to muscle it into right field for a base hit. Yeah, you hand your batting gloves to the first base coach right there, and you thank your lucky stars. That's a nice A.B. Tucker Barnhart is in with one away now as he swings and misses here at strike one. Here's a late swing and a miss, strike two. Barnhart bats left but throws right and stands at 5-11. He was taken in the 10th round back in the 2009 MLB draft. I know this guy wouldn't go into the category of superstar, but to grind out the career he has being drafted where he was, my hat's off to him. If you're on the mound right here, why not continue to climb the ladder if he's going to continue to swing at it? Open to send him packing. Pitch on its way. Good plate discipline to lay off the slider that time, and he draws even at two and two. And it's up to a three-two full count now. Wow, this is a pretty good at bat right here. From down in the count, zero and two, to work the count back to three and two, and he's seen a lot of pitches too. Payoff pitch one more time. And he misses here for ball four. Already two walks surrendered in his first couple of innings of work. Well, this guy's been prone to giving up walks and bunches, and that's already two walks here in the early going. We'll see if this continues to be an issue for him as this start continues. Striding into the box, Luis Castillo. Certainly a big moment in this game. Bases loaded, tie score. That was a pretty good fastball after he walked the hitter previous. There was a little angry on that heater. Just behind the fastball there. Two strikes now. One and two the count to the Reds pitcher. Hey, this is a monster strikeout situation right here. The double play would be great in this situation, but I know he's going for the K. You get a one-two count on a guy, he's going to throw his nastiest stuff. Strike three called. My gracious, what a pitch with the bases loaded, and there are two away now. Up next for Cincinnati. Now at the plate, Nick Senzel. Second at bat now. He grounded out to start the home first. Fouled off. Oh, and he's really getting the better of him now. It's strike two. Hey, this is a huge pitch right here. It would be demoralizing to watch this inning slip away. The 0-2. And, oh, this one's by him to the backstop. And a disastrous time to uncork a wild pitch as the go-ahead run scores from third. 
This is why you've always got to be careful with a runner on third. He went with the slider there and just overthrew it and spiked it into the ground. He's going to have a hard time letting that one go. Already 24 pitches to this point in the inning. Pulled the string on him. Strike three swinging. And that ends the inning. Reds will be forced to settle for just the one. We've played two full. Reds out in front. Top of the third set to get underway. And stepping in will be the very fleet-footed Ahmed Rosario. Fastball in there for a called strike. Rosario, just 24 years of age. He's in his fourth season as a major league player. Fielded by Vado. And the off-balance throw gets him. Nice play for the out. Here comes the second baseman, Robinson Cano. 0 for 1 for him here in this one. And a slider just about gets away from him there as it runs in a bit too close for comfort. Got him out on his front foot there as it swung on and missed for strike one. A 1 1. Nope, at the ball. Bases. Tough one to call there, but it's ruled just above the zone. And he fouls this one off. I know he fouled that pitch off right there, but he was definitely out in front. He was cheating to a heater, no question about it. Slap hard the opposite way. And Cano, don't you know, is going to reach. It's a base hit. Hey, there's a bullet off the wall. The outfielder does a really good job of getting that one in quickly, but I think they had a play there at second base. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there, Dan. I, I, I got to believe you're busting it out of the box thinking two until somebody tells you no. I know it would have been a close play, but I think you got to err on the aggressive side right there. There's one. Relay to Votto's in time at first, and it's a double play. Side retired. Around. And back in Cincinnati as we check in with Heidi Watney. Matt, I had a chance to talk about the state of the Reds' offense with their manager between innings. And flat out, he was very pleased with the quality of their at-bats. Yes, they've only scored one run, but he said they've done a great job of forcing the pitch count up, and he thinks that's going to lead to more offense for them as this game goes on. Thank you, Heidi. Joey Votto swings and misses there, so he's down 0-1. Now a check swing, but he holds up in time. Ball one. Hey, this guy's nasty on the mound. And to check swing and not chase that one, puts himself right back in the count. Swung on and missed. One and two now. With the way this guy's throwing on the mound, you cannot be chasing. You have to set your sights a little bit lower and control the strike zone. Now a swing and a miss as he picks up another one. Make it four strikeouts already, and there's your first out. Here's the pitch. Oh, and one the count. One out, nobody on. Swing and a miss, and he's quickly in the hole. Oh, and two. Man, this has been a game filled of a lot of swings and misses. Not very many confident swings, and this team up there, they'd swing at a butterfly right now if it flew in front of the plate. Lots of swings, lots of misses, a lot of ugly at bats for this team right now. And that's into the outfield for a one-out base hit. Take a look at this again in slow motion. He tracks this thing all the way, gets his hands quickly to the zone, and just rips it down the left field line, just how they draw it up. Standing in now, Eugenio Suarez. 0 for 1 here in the early going. Boy, big problems here to start this at bat. It's 0-2 now. Usually you see chases outside the zone on off-speed stuff like sliders, breaking balls, and change-ups. But to chase a fastball that far outside the zone tells me this hitter's not seeing it well at all. The one-two pitch. In the dirt here, but it won't skip away far enough for the runner to advance. The 2-2. Two -two. We could see the runner in motion here on a 3-2 count with one out. 
there's a pretty good chance he's going to get a pitch to swing at. And if not, it's ball four anyways. Count remains full. And it's fouled away. Suarez left field and carrying well. And goodbye. This one ain't coming back. It's a two-run shot to straight away left. His first homer so far in the series as the Reds move out in front now, three to nothing. Well, people always wonder why some players make so much money, and there's your answer. The great ones find a way to rise to the occasion in the postseason, and he did right there. Stepping in now, Mike Moustakis. Rounded down the third baseline. Well, this is foul for the first strike. Still only one out in the inning. Uh, tried to pull that one back, but he couldn't do it, and it's 0-2 now. Drilled right back up the middle, and that's through for another base hit. He'll make it two for two in this one. And now time is called here as their pitching coach is going to pay a quick visit to the mound to discuss how they want to attack things here. At the plate now, Aristides Aquino. As he'll take a look at a slider here that misses for ball one. Clearly off with his timing on that one, a swinging strike. This ball runs away for ball two. Two and one. Looks like that bomb earlier in the inning kind of put this pitcher on the defensive. That's being very aggressive right now. And he'll try to hold back the swing, but he'll do so unsuccessfully as that's ruled a strike. And this is swung on and missed. His fifth strikeout already, and there are two gone in the inning. Up next, we think that Adam. Now batting, Bo Bichette. He reached on a single in his first try. From the belt, kicks and deals. Count one and We're only in the third inning, and his pitch count is above 60. That's not being too efficient with your pitches. Checks his swing, but this pitch is right there for strike one. Nice adjustment out on the mound. Overthrew the first one a little bit, but got on top and let that ball rip right out in front of him. And he misses two and one. Pulls this one in the air out to left. Left fielder is on the move. He's there to track it down, and that'll end the inning. But the Reds do push across a couple on this two-run home run. We played three full. It's now three-nothing Cincinnati. Leading off the inning, Keith Alonso, as they'll look to get something going here and even this game up. And the first pitch of the inning here misses down and in for a ball. It's 1 0. And it's a called strike to even the count at 1. The 1 1. Is swung on and missed, and that's strike 2. in the air out to left left fielder is on the move and he tracks it down nice play for the first down so the base is empty here with one away and up next the left handed hitting Michael Conforto circle change there called strike one hey he's got great feel for that pitch right there he can throw it anytime he wants for a strike and he takes this one high one and one and the pitch and he jumps at a changeup, a swing and a miss. Here's a fastball in on the fist, and that'll even things up at two and two. Bases are empty, one man out. And that is swung on and missed. He's down on strikes, and the first two are retired here to begin inning number four. 
So two are gone in the Mets half of the fourth and into bed next will be J.D. Davis. Now a check swing but it's strike one anyway says the home plate umpire. Oh, and he's finding his groove out there now it's 0 and 2. I know this guy has a lot of weapons on the mound but what makes him so successful is that he's aggressive in the zone getting ahead forcing action. Strike three called as he can't get the bat off his shoulders. Side retired. Settling in now, Tucker Barnhart. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Tucker. And a ball 1 0. And he can't get out of the way there. So the leadoff man will be aboard to open up the inning. Now batting. Striding in, Luis Castillo. He looked to bounce back after striking out his last time up. And they'll indeed have the pitcher squaring around as he puts this one down. On to first, and they turn the double play. Oh, that's the last thing you want to happen when you're trying to bunt a guy into scoring position. He got it down, but you have to deaden the ball, too. Otherwise, these infielders just eat it up and turn it into a double play. And a check swing. Did he go around? No, says the first base umpire. It's ball one. Hit on the ground toward the left. Rosario brings it in. Throw not nearly in time as he reaches it first. So frustrating, Dero. You make a good pitch and you get these guys that can run around and they're fast. You think you have an out and all of a sudden it turns into an infield single. Yeah, this is definitely part of his game, the ground attack, Dan. He's a speedster. He's going to get a ton of infield singles and he knows how frustrated that pitcher is. He was sat down on strikes in his last at bat. Lofted in the air out toward right center. Right fielder coming on. He tracks it down and that will end the inning. Welcome back. Heidi Watney standing by as we get set for the top of the fifth. Matt, during the break, I caught up with the Mets manager to discuss his thoughts on his club's offense so far. And he told me the quality of their swings needs to improve as the game moves forward. He said they're searching for ways to drive the ball with some authority because it's just not happening for them today. They haven't gotten an extra base hit yet, so it's been a real struggle getting guys into scoring position. But the key, he said, is not to panic. Sometimes you just have to fight through the downturns and keep your focus and energy high. Good stuff, Heidi. Thanks. The windup and the 0-2 pitch. Fouled away. Right side, but it's going to be a foul ball. Hey, three foul balls in a row right here, searching for that put-away stuff. Neither guy giving in here, and they'll do it again. And on 0 2, he misses with a fastball. I can't blame him one bit out on the mound. I'm shocked he didn't pick up the rosin bag and see if he could get a foul ball on that one. He had to see if he would swing way outside the zone. So we got him looking there. Wilson Ramos goes down for the first out in the fifth inning. Out in front of it, strike one. Into the windup, here comes the 0 and 1. And he misses with it, 1 and 1. Hey, I hope that call doesn't throw him off his game right here. He's been pitching one heck of a game, and I'd hate to see the umpire get in his head right now. Circle change here, but it's taken for ball two. And it's two balls and two strikes now. You rarely see a pitcher of this quality throw one right down the middle and man as a hitter probably a good chance you're not going to see that pitch again. No runs four hits and no errors on the Mets line score so far. Had to sit back on the changeup and he did a good job to get the bat on that one. Fouled off. All even at two and two. Here it is. He sends it out to left field. Well hit. But it bangs off the out of town scoreboard. And he's in there easily at second with a one out double. 
So up until this point, they've had to bite and scratch for every single thing. But he puts a good swing on this one and nearly knocks it out of the park. So we'll see if it's contagious and his partner can pick him up right here. Comes into this at bat 0 for 1 in the ball game. Behind 0 and 2 now. Nothing in two count and the pitch. And he'll take the fastball here inside off the plate. It's 1 and 2. One out and a runner on second base. Late making contact on that swing and will do it again on one and two. Looked like the fastball got away from him there. It's ball two. You certainly know he's not trying to work around the pitcher. But sometimes the hardest thing to do is to throw a strike to a guy that you know won't swing the bat. So that's now seven strikeouts for him. Jacob DeGrom goes down for out number two in the top half. Ahmed Rosario is in with two away now as he looks at a called strike one. He's set. Here's the 0 1. And a change up here, but that's taken low in the dirt for a ball. No runs, five hits, and no errors on the Mets line score so far. In front of the changeup, and he can't keep it fair. Two strikes on him now. Count still at one and two. Well below the knees, laid off on the changeup there. This is a fun guy to watch when he's up there, really battles. Doesn't take any pitches off. He's a grinder. Always seems to make it difficult. Well, the play's been made, and that retires the side. In now for the Reds, Jesse Winker, a hit in two tries so far. The left fielder. No balls in one strike. Winker. Into the windup, here comes the 0 and 1. There's a fastball pretty close that time, but ruled a ball one and one. Can't keep the weight back, and he falls behind one and two. Swing and a ball sliced, fouled into the seats down the left field line. Again, a one two. Lined into right, a base hit. You never want to beat a pitcher that breaks a guy out of a slump, but this guy was too good. You knew it was a matter of time before he started barreling baseballs. That gives him a multi-hit game, and I'm sure he's feeling good about it. He comes set. Here's the nothing and nothing pitch. Now a ball hit high in the air, deep down the line in left, hooking just a little. Gone! Second home run of the game right there. He is locked in at the plate. You hear so many of today's players talk about rhythm and timing. Well, he is perfectly on time in the heart of the zone. Now the New York manager's up off the bench on his way to the mound. And he's going to motion for the bullpen as that'll be all for his starter this afternoon. And he gets a piece here as this ball is fouled away. 0-1, here it comes. And a fastball way off target here, and it's even at one. A couple of righties starting to loosen now in the bullpen. And it's one and two. One and two. To two balls and two strikes now. Swing and a miss on the fastball, and that's the first out. So striding in, Aristides Aquino. Swing and a miss, and he's behind 0 1. Big swing and a miss at the fastball, and he's behind in the count 0 and 2. One out, nobody on. In the air, down the line, in left. And that will end up a foul ball. And he fouls this one off. And he strikes him out as well. So make it back-to-back -back punch outs here to the first two men he faces out of the bullpen. 
the bat. So bases are empty here with two gone. And in to bat next, the legacy Bo Bichette. No balls and a strike to count. Check swing, but he held up in time. Ball one. He's going to have to take a deep breath. A little bit ultra aggressive at the plate right now after fishing at the first pitch. And looking like he was going to commit on that one. The one two. Hot shot down the line. A dive and oh he can't hang on. And they are not going to get him at first. He's aboard easily. Man that's surprising Dan. This guy's flailing at stuff in the dirt and above his head to get to two strikes and then he lays him the cook. Oh you would think after throwing two pitches out of the zone that he would triple up and throw a third one either up down or in and out but that one right in the middle of the strike zone. Last time up he was hit by a pitch. One and one to Tucker Barnhart. In the dirt, and now let's see. And he'll make it into scoring position here with two away, as that'll be scored a wild pitch. Two out here and a runner at second. Two balls and two strikes to the Reds catcher. And he missed with this one up around the noggin. Now it's full. Some pitchers fall into the trap of giving in on three and two because they don't want to walk the guy. But with the base open, it's not the end of the world if you do. You still need to make a quality pitch. And that misses ball four. So it's first and second now with two out. Now batter. So it's first and second with two men gone. And digging in to hit next, it'll be the pitcher, Luis Castillo. They'll try and entice him with a high fastball, but he wouldn't commit. It's ball one. And when you're already down five, the last thing you want to do is fall behind in the count when you're on the mound. That's not going to do anything to help you get back into this thing. 2-0 oh count and the pitch. And the pitch is off the catcher's glove as it rolls away. Good job to corral this quickly as the runners hold on. The 3-0. And this misses as well. Ball four. And he's walked the opposing pitcher on four pitches. Ready once again. Nick Senzel. He hits here in a spot where he might be able to put this one out of reach. Yeah, Matt. Down five. Another run across here could very well put the nail in the coffin. Mentally, they... One run is scored. And a second run is across. And a relay home. And he is in there. With the bases loaded, the pitcher couldn't afford to get behind the count, so he grooves it on the first pitch, and he jumps all over it, clearing the bases and scoring three. That's part of why pitching with the bases loaded is so challenging. Jerry Spamilia gets the call to pitch here, and he'll try to sort this mess out. He's going to try to at least eat a couple of innings for his guys. So up steps the former MVP, Joey Votto. Men on third with two down. And Votto's able to lay off that one as the count turns even to one and one. And that one got a piece of him. So stepping in, Jesse Winker. He scored after reaching on a single in his last time up. First pitch of the at bat on its way. Line to the right side, but foul. Well above the letters with the fastball that time. On the run, this one in on him, and he can't connect, so he finds himself down one and two now. Oh, I love that pitch right there. Up and in. Jam. Sandwich. Swung on and lifted in the air to left center. Oh, and this nightmare inning continues as they're going to tack on even more here. And he's safe. 
Yeah, Matt, credit to this offense. They've been swinging the sticks well all game long, and it just continues here with a two-RBI hit. Some days the hitting gods are simply just smiling down on you. At the plate, Eugenio Suarez, 1-0 and oh the count. And that swung on and missed on a pitch down, one and one. A ball and two strikes. You chase a pitch that bad outside the zone, you got to find a way to regroup. Adjust the batting gloves. Only look over the hard low 17 inches. Tried to hold up there. Appeal down to first and no swing. It's ball two. Seven runs have crossed the plate in the inning. 2-2 pitch is fouled away. From the belt, kicks and deals. Three and two now. If you're at the plate right now, you have to realize who's on deck. I guarantee you something's over the heart of the plate. You have to be aggressive in the zone right here. The next 3-2. And that misses ball four, so it's first and second now with two out. At the plate, Mike Mustakis. And we'll see what he can do here with a pair of runners on base and two gone here in the fifth. Open stance by Mustakis, and now the pitch. He's got it. And he'll step on the bag himself, and the inning is over. But a big inning here as seven runs cross the plate, and this lead grows even wider. Here's Robbie Cano now. He leads off this half inning in what they hope will be a rebuttal to all those runs they just gave up. Well, Matt, I think mentally they need to get one or two of these runs back right here. Just getting on the board after getting socked in the mouth by the opposing team can lift the team up a bit. We'll see if they can string something together. Behind 0-2 now. Grounded back up the middle. He gets dirty, but he can't get there, and it's into center field. And that's just another base hit in a long line of many. Seems like he's been pitching from the stretch the entire game, but somehow he's still got a shutout going. We'll see how long he can make this last. One there on to Votto, and they get the double play. Next will be the Mets cleanup hitter, Pete Alonzo. It was a flyout for him in his last trip. Almost, Matty. Almost went deep his last A.B. Certainly just missed it. With this guy's big power, he's feeling pretty good at the dish. Look for him to try and get on something and drive it out of the yard this A.B. Throw in time, and the side is retired. Coming to the plate now, Aristides Aquino. He went down on strikes last time up. He's ready. Here's the first offering. The 0 1 pitch. And it looks now like a right hander's begun to get loose in the Mets bullpen. And did he go around? No, he did not. Ball two. On the ground up the middle. And this is going to scoot on through into center for a base hit leading off the inning. There's a hard hit ground ball. Pitcher not able to get a glove on it. Hard now single up the middle. Go yeah, watch your lips right there, Dan. Sent it back right where it came from. Into the box now, Bo Bichette. As he'll swing and miss at a first pitch slider at strike one. So far, two for three in this one. Strike two swinging just out in front of the slider. So back to back sliders for strikes. Does he come back with yet another? Hey, that's back to back really good sliders. I wouldn't be surprised if he threw another one right here. Looks like he's got that slide ball in his back pocket right now. Just inside, not by much. It's two and two. He went with the off speed there once he got him to 0 and 2, but now that they both missed, I think we'll see more of a challenge pitch here. You don't have to get in, but you can't be too cute either. Ready now with the payoff pitch. And he won't have to contend with a throw as that misses for ball four. First and second now to start the inning. Now batting. Hector. Into the box. Tucker Barnhart. From the stretch. 
Now a good pitch around the knees, but it doesn't quite catch the bottom of the zone. I'll tell you, it's a helpless feeling for a manager or a pitching coach when your pitchers are having a really hard time throwing strikes. What are you supposed to do other than keep trying new guys until someone starts attacking the zone? 1-1. Uh, one, one. First and second here with nobody out. Now here's the ball hit high and deep is straight away right field. A ball that's carrying. On the warning track, he makes the catch. Throw won't get him. Good read there at second base to know he could make it to third on the flyout. Now he's only 90 feet away with one out. First pitch of the at-bat on its way. Now the suicide squeeze, but it's popped up. So they get the out at first, but the run will score on the suicide squeeze. Now better fielder. Yeah. Trying to pick things up where we left off. Nick Senzel, runner in scoring position with Sugan. From the stretch, here's the pitch. Now the fastball is swung on and missed. Great job by the pitcher right there, changing eye levels. We all know he's a sinker ball pitcher, but if he could throw some four seamers up in the zone like that, it could work for him. Oh, and look out as this runs in and gets him. The second man he's plunked in this one. Yeah, there's no question that this one got away from him. He was cruising, had him down 0-2 with two outs, and he's going to be pretty unhappy with that. You never want to give an offense new life in an inning. In is Joey Votto now. He comes in 0 for 2 thus far. He's set. Now the pitch. Ball one, no fight. Two down, runners at first and second. A 1 1 count to the Reds' first baseman. And it's fouled away. Looking for the strikeout. Here's the one two hit down the line at first. Another one two delivery. Ball that back down. Sinker three and two now for the guy in the mound. This is one of those innings where nothing comes easy. He's thrown a bunch of pitches, and this A.B. hasn't been any different. Definitely laboring at the moment. And he misses with it for ball four, so the bases will be loaded now with two away. He's set. Here it comes. High and deep to right center. A ball that's carrying. And he makes the catch as just the one run comes across in the inning. One more. Seventh inning ready to roll. And up next, the left-handed hitting Michael Conforto. It doesn't look very promising so far in this one as we move into the later innings. Down by a bundle, it's time to get some base runners and hopefully a long ball to get them back into this one. And a perfect start to the seventh as this should be extra bases. And he'll pull into second here with nobody out. Well, it isn't exactly earth sharing, but when you struggle like they have in the plate all day, you take any extra base hit that you can get. If they can string together a few at-bats like that, they're going to get... Now a reaching grab as he makes the play and loses his balance all at once. And that'll bring up Wilson Ramos. No hits to this point. An outside target here, and he hits it for strike one. I really like how he's been attacking hitters early in these A-Bs. He's thrown strikes on the first pitch to over 70% of the guys he's faced so far. Good job of holding up on the low ball there, and it's one and two. Wow, really close pitch on 0 and 2. That just missed, and if he hits that spot right there again, he might get the call next time. Here now the 2-2. Back up the middle. And that'll get by into center field for a base hit. Now a long throw home. Oh, but it's offline, so the run will score. Yeah, and they say better late than never, and that's 
definitely the case here. They couldn't get anything going through the first six frames, but they scratch a run across here in the seventh. We'll see if they can parlay that first run into something more. Here's Juan Cespedes as he'll take a look at a high strike that time. It's nothing in one. He's one for two in this one. Just a bit late and he's fallen behind 0 and 2. Looking to punch him out again. The pitch softly hit down to third. Likely no shot at two. To second for one. The turn throw is in time. How about that? Now we're going to have a conference at the home plate area, so it would appear that we'll see a double switch here. Paul Seawall will come on now, and he'll slide into the seventh spot in the lineup following the double switch. Tomas Nito is into the ball game as well as he'll slide into the pitcher spot, hitting ninth now on the double switch. 0-2, the count to Suarez. Softly on a line to third. And this will be no problem over at third. And there's the first down. No batter, number nine. So striding forward play. now, Mike Moustakis. A couple of singles for him and four trips for him this afternoon. Fly ball right down the line and left. Left fielder is on the move. He gets there and makes the play for the second out of the inning. Now number 44. Digging in now, Aristides Aquino. He singled his last time up on the ground to the right side. And this will get through into right, and he's aboard with a single. Now that is good stop. Go. So now to the plate, Bo Bichette, as he lifts it in the air to right field. Conforto will reach out with one hand to make the catch on. Now at the plate, Tomas Nido. He leads off their half of the eighth, and they've been unable to get that starter out of the game to this point. Yeah, he settled in early on the mound, partly due to the lead his guys gave him to take some of the pressure off. He's taken that and pitched very effectively in this one. Cody Reed has been summoned from the bullpen as he'll do so to start the eighth. Set to deliver the 0-1. This is in the air out to straightaway center. Senzel's got it, and there's one gone. Now that the football. And that'll bring in the former top prospect, Ahmed Rosario, as he will take strike one on the fastball here. No balls and a strike. He's hitless in three at bats to this point. Hit out towards second, fielded by Mustakis. And that's the second out. The batter, number 24. Into the box now, Robinson Cano. He's two for three and looking for more here. Lifted down the line and left. And that will end up a foul ball. The wind up and the 0-1. This is swung on and popped up. Crossing into foul territory now behind third. Stepping in and ready for another shot, Tucker Barnhart. He flew out in his last at bat. And a fastball close, but ultimately ruled a ball 1-0. Obviously, the game plan wasn't to let this guy beat you right here. He's already walked twice, and that pitch out of the zone tells me they want nothing to do with him. And an off-balance throw is in time as he takes one away. Wow! So here's the Reds pitcher, number 23. And he's getting his first plate appearance here in the eighth after entering off number four. We'll move into the on-deck circle now to try to get something started here with one gone in the inning. Swung on and missed for the first strike. Bases are empty, one man out. Not close with the off-speed pitch taken for a ball. You know he's probably cheating on that inside pitch after he got jammed earlier. If you're on the mound right now, you want to try to hit that outside corner, and there's a pretty good chance you'll get him to roll over something. And quickly, there are two away. Up next, so the batting order turns over now and set to go Nick Senzel. He's got to be looking for vengeance after getting plunked in his last at-bat. This is hit high in the air out toward left center. And eight innings have come and gone now as the inning is over. Robert Stevenson comes on from the pen hoping to finish this one off here in the top of the ninth. So here's Jeff McNeil starting things for his side in the ninth as they face the improbable odds of trying to come back in this one. Yeah, not a lot of hope for them at this point. These guys know these bats still count. 
at least for their own stats, you can't mill in your chances as a professional. Fastball right back to the mound. And he'll flip on to first to record the out. So here's the cleanup hitter, Pete Alonzo. He was retired via the ground ball last time up. Fastball taken, but that gets the zone for a strike. Not close with that when it's way above the strike zone. One out, nobody on. Here's a shot to left field and deep. Look at this. And this one is gone. A home run. Yeah, all things considered, it's been a day to forget for them. So this homer will be a welcome to everyone in that dugout. Maybe this gives them a little momentum going into the next game. Michael Conforto comes on with one gone here as he looks at a called strike one. So far, two for three in this one. Line toward the alley in left center. Winker is there, and there are two men gone now. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Swing and a miss, and they're up against it now as they're down to their final strike of the afternoon. Ooh, wee, that was an ugly swing. I'm sure he's not going to watch that one on replay after the game. Now what's left of this crowd this afternoon gets to their feet. Fastball right back to the mound. And he'll just flip this one onto the bag at first. And that will conclude matters here as the ball game is over. Look, it's easy. You don't have to look any further than the fifth inning to see where this game was decided. They put together a big rally and did everything down the stretch to secure this win. Well, this one pretty much over before it started as we give you a final look at the line score here in what turned out to be a blowout victory. Well, heroes are made in the postseason, and he was at least the hero in this one. He's our tops player of the game. Yeah, no time like the postseason to come through and lift your team to victory. He was certainly a big factor here, and it was pretty cool to see. 11-2 is the...